welcome back to why in the morning i go by the name of by Moses or it's by morning social media platform and it's time for youth and politics so i'll be bringing you this every single monday and uh, be sure to interact with us on social media at white 54 channel on twitter white 54 underscore channel on instagram and white 54 on facebook so i have amazing gentlemen in the studio with me today but the issues we have on the table are the recent uh, the recent proposed uh, budget by the cs <coughs> of finance we have the deputy president uh, alleging that there are plots to assassinate him and we also have the recent uh, remarks by the mp of stare uh, charles njagua and uh, the breeding of xenophobia in this country right now so be sure to interact with us on social media at white 54 channel on twitter white 54 underscore channel on instagram and white 54 on facebook or you can hit me up directly at it's very more on every social media platform and with me in studio we have daniel kongo who's a legal expert and we have ngunjiri karaoke who's a public policy uh, analyst, analyst. Yeah. karibuni sana Asante. all right so your cameras are, are number four and three so you look straight into camera four and just introduce yourself if i left anything out in oh. your in your credentials yeah okay uh -huh. uh, my name is Benio kongo mm -hmm. i am an advocate of the high court mm -hmm. and uh, i handle litigation matters mm -hmm. mostly court work mm -hmm. and the uh, part of conveyancing which involves land and sell transactions mm -hmm. and uh, I work in, in the law firm of HM Daisy mm -hmm. and company advocates mm -hmm. who happens to be the speaker of Vihiga County right. yes that's thank you very much for coming yes. uh, we've seen problems at the Kenya School of Law but that's a topic for another day <laughs> today exactly. we're going to be talking about exactly. the issues at the table uh, introduce yourself okay my mm -hmm. name is Kariu King Gunjiri mm -hmm. I'm a public policy analyst mm -hmm. And I'm delighted to be here this morning. Mm -hmm. uh, after this discussion, perhaps we can uh, push it further to social media mm -hmm. on Twitter at Dante Karaoke, mm -hmm. on Facebook, Karaoke Gonjiri. Mm -hmm. And uh, just before we begin, mm -hmm. uh, we have received very sad news mm -hmm. uh, this morning. Thank you very much for bringing that the up, by the corporate mm -hmm. leadership. Mm -hmm. And again, I wish to send my condolences. Mm -hmm. um, we have uh, had a committed CEO in Safaricom mm -hmm. and uh, today it was a shocker but again mm -hmm. we leave all that to God mm -hmm. and uh, hope that uh, God will fulfill the desires mm -hmm. of the hearts of the family of the believed mm -hmm. and that uh, he can give them comfort yes and on Otherwise, behalf uh -huh. thank you very much for having us this morning mm -hmm. yes. and on behalf of everybody else and the why in the morning team we send our condolences to the friends and family of uh, the former ceo of safaricom mr bob colimo himself uh, so onto the matters at hand uh, we had the ces for finance uh, proposing uh, some things in parliament about the budget the budget is three trillion Kenya shillings it's the biggest ever and uh, my first question is uh, in the 2010 constitution there was a provision for public participation uh, from Mamamboga to the most elite Kenyan is allowed to participate in this budgeting process and uh, resource allocation so uh, so far up to the tabling in Parliament do you think there has been enough public participation we can start with you okay um i think uh, with regards to the current budget of the, the kenyan government mm -hmm. this is actually the highest uh, budget ever seen mm -hmm. and uh, i was reading the newspaper the other day and i saw that the kenyan budget as it stands for three trillion mm -hmm. is actually much more than uh, Tanzania, Uganda, and Rwanda's budget combined. Mm -hmm. So that just tells you the volume of how the budget has expanded mm -hmm. to this uh, 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 time of the year. And uh, if you look at successive governments during Kibaki's regime, the budget wasn't uh, as high as it is now. And uh, it's, uh, it has been contributed with a lot of borrowing. There has been so much borrowing by the current government as we see. But when it comes to public participation, the ordinary Mwananchi does not know even the budget making process figures like three trillion are unimaginable somebody <laughs> cannot even understand conceptualize, it. Mm -hmm. conceptualize. how do, mm -hmm. how do you come up with tr three trillion mm -hmm. that is uh, a billion times a billion three times mm -hmm. so in order for public participation to first of all uh, take effect mm -hmm. 
there has to be an understanding of the budget making process mm -hmm. and the ordinary mwananchi needs to understand how in the first place does is this budget made mm -hmm. now uh, there are two we the kenyan government is bilateral mm -hmm. which means the there are two kinds of governing systems mm -hmm. there is the county government mm -hmm. and there is the national government mm -hmm. and uh, both these governments are legislated also through two houses the first house is the parliament mm -hmm. and the second house is the senate mm -hmm. now the parliament deals with issues concerning the national government mm -hmm. as per the constitution the uh, county government all the matters relating to the devolution and developments in the counties is done by the Senate so the very first step in the budget making process is public participation and for public participation to happen there has to be the first step is the cabinet secretary for finance uh, 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 recommends policies for public participation regarding on what the public expect Right. of the outcome of this of the recommendation how is it how is it done and where can we find this recommendation exactly uh -huh. usually there are ministries mm -hmm. in different sectors of the government you, there's a ministry for health there's a ministry of education there's a ministry uh, of uh, devolution so all these ministries the cabinet secretary for finance issues directives uh, that certain forms be filled through these ministries mm -hmm. and officials are appointed to I uh, uh, distribute these forms mm -hmm. to a specific class of people. Mm -hmm. This class of people, there is what is called the Public Finance Management Act mm -hmm. that provides for uh, the county budget and economic forum. Mm -hmm. The county budget and economic forum has representatives mm -hmm. from the marginalized communities, from organizations, and from different parastatal heads. Mm -hmm. All these people are chosen to represent the 40 million people because there is no way 40 million people can give their views mm -hmm. with respect to the budget. Yes, and even analyzing the views. And will even be analyzing very the So what I'm getting from you is that uh, for yes. there to be public participation, yes. people have to know first. There first has to be that knowledge. E exactly. Right. There has to be the knowledge first right. of how So the process. what you're saying there's need for civic education? There's n what what I'm saying mm -hmm. is there's actually need for uh, the public education. Mm -hmm. The public need to be educated mm -hmm. on how the budget is created, mm -hmm. how the budget is made mm -hmm. and after that they should how be taught how to uh, participate in uh, the process. Participate in the process. Yes. Thank you very much. As yes. a public policy yes. uh, analyst, yes. I think you can break it down for the layman yeah. uh, easily. Yes. Uh, so what do you think uh, about this particular? What happens in public policy mm -hmm. is that uh, a decision mm -hmm. are people that are going to be affected by a decision mm -hmm. must be involved mm -hmm. in its making. Mm -hmm. So you must try and collect their views mm -hmm. as regards to whatever you want to apply to them mm -hmm. as a government. Now we have two levels mm -hmm. of uh, budget making process. Mm -hmm. We have at the national level mm -hmm. which is precipitated by the National Assembly. We just finished the budget cycle mm -hmm. uh, whereby we had uh, especially members of the budget committees mm -hmm. going around various counties of this country. Mm -hmm and instituting what they would call the public voice. Mm -hmm. At the county level, we have what we call the County Integrated Development Plan. Mm -hmm. We call them CIDPs. Mm -hmm. Now that is where the people come together and uh, converge their views, mm -hmm. whereby a plan is built upon what the mm -hmm. public has to say. Mm -hmm. And the biggest problem that has been in the public participation process mm -hmm. is because first we have not defined what public participation is mm -hmm. because as maybe a county, for example the county of Nairobi, I would uh, hire several people, mm -hmm. buy them uh, some cheap snacks mm -hmm. and bring them on board, mm -hmm. then tell them that this is public participation and it will be written on paper mm -hmm. that this public participation. So it's treated as a formality. Yes, and then it. they will uh, mm -hmm. pass whatever I feel mm -hmm. should be passed. Mm -hmm. 
So we also need to have a good public education <laughs> whereby people are educated. All right. So whose role is it to educate process. the public? You see, mm -hmm. we have uh, the government mm -hmm. must invest mm -hmm. in an elaborate public participation process mm -hmm. whereby from uh, the village elders mm -hmm. up to the highest level of the presidency, mm -hmm. any time that we, or any other leader, any time that we get an opportunity mm -hmm. to speak to the public, mm -hmm. we must tell them what is due okay. to their lives. And uh, we have seen so many problems mm -hmm. in terms of uh, counties mm -hmm. uh, misappropriating funds. Mm -hmm. For example, the people's priorities mm -hmm. were something like water. Mm -hmm. And then we see another program Mm. That has I'm was going not, to watch the Afghan. Yes, that was not <laughs> in the CID. Right. So that is why I'm saying that uh, both levels of government needs to invest in an elaborate public participation process. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Thank you very much. So uh, we are we are living in an age where eighty percent, more than eighty percent of Kenyans are uh, are documented to have mobile phones mm -hmm. and smartphones for that matter. Mm -hmm. All right, so do you think this is an angle that can be used to approach uh, uh, this public participation in education? Yeah, I think uh, the world of today mm -hmm. is digital. Mm -hmm. Everything is on social media. Mm -hmm. Even this will be aired out in, in social media, YouTube platforms, Facebook. So the, the, the digital aspect of information is very important, mm -hmm. and this can be disseminated through uh, Facebook, mm -hmm. YouTube, and all these other uh, digital platforms mm -hmm. which can be accessed through the phone. Mm -hmm. So it can be actually a good way. The opinion polls and surveys which are done through online. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a way which it can really assist in the public being uh, educated about uh, public participation. All right. Yes. Do you think the, the will is there to educate the public, to let the public understand and know about these? Yeah. Uh, to educate the public and let the public know and understand uh, these things about the, the budget? Because yeah, for, for, for an effective governance system, mm -hmm. the stakes are high and we cannot afford to leave anything to chance, mm -hmm. whether it is <coughs> through the use of social media, mm -hmm. whether it is through the use of public rallies or uh, any other avenue that would be appropriate to reach the public, mm -hmm. such avenue cannot be ignored. Mm -hmm. And uh, with the will, I think anything can be done because what we have had is uh, an elite class mm -hmm. which capitalizes mm -hmm. on the ignorance mm -hmm. of the masses. <laughs> and uh, I think if they were serious, mm -hmm and uh, they were true to the calling, right. the natural call, that mm -hmm. is a service to humanity, mm -hmm. then they will not be taking advantage of the unsophisticated masses. All right. Yes. Uh, these people will claim, all right, that yeah. they, they posted the documents. The Auditor General will claim that all the audits have been posted online, all the aud audits have been gazetted. The public are free to go and acquire them and read them. Yes. But somebody, this begs the question, how many of us can understand books of accounts and uh, the rest of these things? So how do we approach this particular issue? Uh, first of all, when uh, these government agencies say that you can get the auditing reports on, uh, on, in the public domain, first of all, they, they are not very clear where exactly mm -hmm. you, get, you can get these domains. There are several uh, areas in the government, mm -hmm. there are several uh, devolutions, mm -hmm. there are several ministries. So. In order to narrow down, they need to be very specific. And if I'm a layman, someone who has never gone to school, mm -hmm. you know, even the literacy rates, not uh, many people are knowledgeable. How will they understand this information once they access it? So there needs to be a kind of mechanism the government provides mm -hmm. to educate people on how to understand mm -hmm. this uh, budgetary uh, allocations, all these auditing reports, all that information. Mm -hmm. So I think there's need for the government to move an extra mile in educating mm -hmm. these people who are, their literacy levels are not as good as mm -hmm. the elite. What about simplifying these things, these records, yeah. and just yeah. telling us simply, this is what was uh, proposed, uh, this is what we allocated, and this is how it was spent in simpler terms, other than just having... Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, yes. The, the, the accounting, you see, we normally have 
maybe you see the auditor general mm -hmm. will quote maybe perhaps qualified report mm -hmm. and qualified report mm -hmm. so for a layman uh, that is also complex mm -hmm. so what we normally see is a situation whereby the media mm -hmm. tries now to explain mm -hmm. what this county mm -hmm. blah 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 has done with the and resources. they're guilty of picking the juicy yes, stories yes, from yes, the reports yes yes yes, yes. Mm -hmm. so i don't know but uh, you know the auditors mm -hmm. use it is just like uh, maybe what i normally use as the political jargon mm -hmm. i might uh, say some things that uh, perhaps someone who is not of uh, such adept mm -hmm. will not understand mm -hmm. same to him same to you mm -hmm. i heard there is uh, another terminology in media called it's a rap so <laughs> i don't know uh, what what that would uh, uh, mean to a common person mm -hmm. but again uh, as long as far as we also continue using those terminologies mm -hmm. in those reports mm -hmm. we need to have a breakdown mm -hmm. of uh, for example the county of Ra county of nairobi had mm -hmm. a budget of 30 billion mm -hmm. so how much was allocated to ministries how much was allocated to uh, let's say recurrent infrastructure or, uh, yeah, or things like that or mm. recurrent expenditure mm -hmm. how much was not used mm -hmm. because we have some counties mm -hmm. which also have uh, uh, some monies mm -hmm. that are left in their accounts mm -hmm. then we have what we call uh, the IFMIS, mm -hmm. which would ordinarily be a system that would ensure that there is accountability mm -hmm. uh, any transactions or any uh, allocations that are done and we have had problems with it yes. so, uh, yeah, yeah, yes. so far yeah yeah we have uh -huh. had uh, challenges uh -huh. uh, i cannot object that uh -huh. but again that also docks to what my colleague talked about uh -huh. that the people the masses need uh -huh. to know in a case whereby a citizen can be able to assess a project for mm -hmm. example a dam mm -hmm. at his or her uh, locality mm -hmm and uh, look at uh, what perhaps was allocated for the same uh, project mm. and try and see whether it makes sense mm. whether there is value for money mm. the monies that were allocated mm. for that project so it spent, right? yes and yes 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 all right so uh, somebody yes. told me uh, from a neighboring country that kenyans we like to complain so much yes uh, we complain but we never take action yeah. so uh somebody who's watching us right now yeah. what is that first step this first step they can take uh, to participate in in the uh, public finance management uh, the first step mm -hmm. uh, the ordinary monenshi can take mm -hmm. in participating in uh, public finance management mm -hmm. is first of all to uh, follow mm -hmm. the ministries you know this uh, allocations and budgetary uh, making process they mm -hmm. are emanate from the ministries mm -hmm. so i think an ordinary mm -hmm. manager needs to visit mm -hmm. actually particularly the ministry of finance mm -hmm. which is actually in on the harambe harambe road mm -hmm. and uh, see a uh, not he can even add, uh, request to see the minister of finance or somebody working in that office to be explained to mm -hmm. on the budget making process mm -hmm. in that way the ordinary monenti will be taking that initiative mm -hmm. on a personal level to know so the first step is to go there and follow up on the process mm -hmm. then another thing that can be done is the ministries to go hands on the ground mm -hmm. circulate a uh, uh, leaflets and the brochures mm -hmm. on how the budget making process is done and how the public can be made to participate into this mm -hmm. so i think the very first step mm -hmm. is the the policy making on public participation mm -hmm. remember the ministry of finance particularly the cabinet secretary secretary for finance mm -hmm. is mandated to make a policy a policy mm -hmm. on the public participation mm -hmm. the minister of finance that is uh, henry rotich mm -hmm. so that is the first step mm -hmm. it starts with the minister mm -hmm. to ensure that the policies in making public mm -hmm. the budget allo allocation mm -hmm. should be in such a manner that it is there are policies which can reach the public hands on mm -hmm. then there's also the second aspect mm -hmm. of the county executive committee mm -hmm. this one is for now the county governments mm -hmm. because i remember i said there there are two levels of government mm -hmm. the county and the national mm -hmm. and both of these levels have uh, revenue allocated to them so it is important for the public to be engaged 
both at national level and county level. So for the county level, there is a minister for finance in the county who is now mandated to uh, make policies with respect to public participation. So they create forms and they should be able to make policies in such a manner that they distribute these forms to the public and the public are uh, get educated on how they can participate mm -hmm. and give their views mm -hmm. through the county uh, county budget and economic forums mm -hmm. which they are uh, which whose uh, uh, forums they give their views mm -hmm. and their views are accommodated by the counties mm -hmm. so basically that is the first major step mm -hmm. which a uh, public the public can actually be involved in the budget uh, making process mm -hmm. and uh, there's this uh, a, 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 pr a professor professor Lumumba once said that mm -hmm. uh, there is a common saying give uh, if you want to hide something from an African, mm -hmm. put it in a book, mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> it is going. It is. It right. will be hidden forever. <laughs> so that tells a lot about mm -hmm. the public culture, mm -hmm. the public or the African culture, and the reading culture, uh, and the and reading culture. In exactly. Mm -hmm. They, they don't have a reading culture. Mm -hmm. A reading culture is very important because mm -hmm. if you don't read, mm -hmm. you can't be able to understand how these systems and processes work. Mm -hmm. So I think if the common ordinary monarchy can also try and mm -hmm. re develop a reading culture, mm -hmm. they can be able to participate properly mm -hmm. in the public uh, mm -hmm. finance management. Not manipulation exactly. and, and yes. abuse. Because, right. because we are talking about uh, the prudent use of public resources, as provided for in the Public uh, Finance Management Act, mm -hmm. perhaps the first and the most basic mm -hmm. responsibility for the citizens mm -hmm. is to elect leaders that have uh, an accountability track record mm -hmm. and uh, make sure that they don't take leaves mm -hmm. uh, to those offices. <laughs> All right. Then we have a selective process mm -hmm. that is always done by government mm -hmm. because they know mm -hmm. and this is in all levels mm -hmm. especially in the counties mm -hmm. they know that uh, if the citizens are going to be fully aware mm -hmm. of whatever happens mm -hmm. in uh, those processes mm -hmm. some of them might be in trouble mm -hmm. and they know what they have done mm -hmm. so apart from that selective process we now have the civil society mm -hmm. We have uh, like uh, info track. Mm -hmm. We have the we for just the state. Did a study by the way yes, that we, we are going we to talk about. Mm -hmm. We have the for the state. Mm -hmm. That is you guys, the media, mm -hmm. that will now step in mm -hmm. and fill that gap. Mm -hmm. Be able to educate the common populace, which mm -hmm. does not understand these things. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think more to the selective process mm -hmm. uh, by those in leadership. Mm -hmm. There is other processes. Mm -hmm. Like for example, and I've always maintained that uh, the future mm -hmm. of uh, present day politics mm -hmm. rests in town halls, mm -hmm. whereby people will not be going to political rallies mm -hmm. to chair mm -hmm. leaders as they give them empty rhetorics, mm -hmm. but uh, they will go to town, town hall and have, and many uh, have now have one on one conversations mm -hmm. whereby they can be able to ask questions mm -hmm. and also if there is something to boo, mm -hmm. then they can uh, get their dose. Thank you very yes. much for that, yes. uh, view right there. White Fire channel on Twitter, White Fire Four underscore channel on Instagram, and White Fire Four Facebook is the way to interact with us. Keep your views, comments, suggestions, and questions coming. We have a legal expert in studio. We have a public policy. Uh, Public policy analyst in studio it doesn't get better than this. On to our next topic now, and this is uh, the recent remarks by M uh, MP of Stare, yeah. Charles Njagwa. Yes. Uh, we saw uh, xenophobia taking root in South Africa. We criticized, we talked a lot of nonsense about South Africans. We saw it rooting in, in the United States, where we saw the President of the United States he wanted yeah. to build a wall uh, <laughs> uh, on the Mexican border. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you see. Uh -huh. Ordinarily, mm -hmm. an issue of foreign policy mm -hmm. weight mm -hmm. rests at the discretion of the president. Mm -hmm. So any issue that appertains mm -hmm. to international relations, mm -hmm. uh, whether mutual or uh, we are on the ones on above it, mm -hmm. that is uh, at the wisdom of the president. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, as I said earlier, mm -hmm. we, as the citizens, we also need to be very careful mm -hmm. with the kind of leaders we elect. Mm -hmm. At least the power is in our hands. Yes, mm -hmm. at least that will be a basic mm -hmm. for a person like Jaguar mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to know that uh, his power mm -hmm. rests in the chambers. Mm -hmm. Any such kind of sentiments mm -hmm. or any kind of a remark mm -hmm. that would protect local traders mm -hmm. would better be affirmed at the floor of the house. At the floor of the house, but in again, instead of at the market. Yes, but mm -hmm. again, that also brings to the fore the debate of whether our leaders mm -hmm. really understand the governance uh, System. Uh, aspect of uh, our democracy because mm -hmm. our country has a president mm -hmm. and uh, the president mm -hmm. is the one that is supposed to either bargain Mm -hmm. or comment on issues of uh, international relations, relations. Mm -hmm. and therefore uh, that matter would not have uh, been a matter of a member of parliament mm -hmm. when we have a sitting president mm -hmm. moreover to that mm -hmm. the president would not utter such responsible remarks mm -hmm. bearing in mind that uh, we have had uh, a, a painful history mm -hmm of uh, xenophobic mm -hmm. uh, issues in South Africa mm -hmm. and as a continent mm -hmm. as we talk of Agenda 2063 mm -hmm. whereby people will be socially and uh, economically empowered mm -hmm. we cannot be having such kind of uh, uh, unnecessary statements mm -hmm. coming from members of parliament mm -hmm. We also have Kenyans that live in Tanzania. Mm -hmm. We have Kenyans that go across the world. Yes, all over the world. We have uh, Kenyans yes. all over the world. Again, mm -hmm. we are a member mm -hmm. of the African Union, Union. Security Council. Members, which, we yes. are a member of the Commonwealth as well. Uh, yeah, but again, uh -huh. we have a very powerful position in Africa. Mm -hmm. We are a member of the AU mm -hmm. Security Council, which is basically the is the very few mm -hmm. countries that are the strongest. Mm -hmm. We are the ones who represent the East and the Horn of Africa. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we are just like uh, in the UN, mm -hmm. we have US, France, Germany, mm -hmm. and Russia. Mm -hmm. So we are that in Africa. Mm -hmm. And thus, our responsibility mm -hmm. is far much uh, than what any person would think. Mm -hmm. So we need to have our responsibility taken mm -hmm. into account mm -hmm. and uh, any move that we make mm -hmm. of geopolitical importance mm -hmm. must be uh, recognizive mm -hmm. of uh, the factors that are prevailing in the African continent right now mm -hmm. and we must not be the ones to divide. A member of the Security Council mm -hmm. ordinarily mm -hmm. is like uh, uh, do I say a firstborn in, mm -hmm. uh, in, in the, the family, family. <laughs> and uh, he should be the one who, Very is, yes, who is telling the others this is what we should do. Mm -hmm. And so, let me say it was unfortunate mm -hmm. and uh, let, let, us, let the other members of parliament mm -hmm. learn from that. Mm -hmm. However, we can also not forget that other countries also need to respect us as well. Yes, I like that you are yes. getting into the politics of it. Uh, I'll let you speak on that in a few. Uh, but uh, so you blame this on ignorance. Somebody needs. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because, uh, uh, for example, myself mm -hmm. and uh, there are a couple of members of parliament mm -hmm. in that house mm -hmm. who understand some of these basic things, mm -hmm. and uh, they will not go uttering such remarks mm -hmm. that will jeopardize our relations with Tanzania, mm -hmm. even if we have had a hostile history mm -hmm. with Mr. Bagufuli, mm -hmm. as a country, and that even if as, we beat them uh, in yes, the Afcon, as the strongest, I've <laughs> 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 now like, that is another story because uh, mm -hmm. we, we also we sent a political signal. By the way, that match mm -hmm. had a lot of uh, geopolitical significance, All right. and especially <laughs> we'll in, the, talk in, the, in the prevailing <laughs> epoch All right. of Jaguar and uh, British. All right. So, yes. what, what is your day? Uh, we have we've, we've talked about that. Yeah. Uh, I'll move on to the next since we don't have so much time, yeah. and I'd like you to address this issue on uh, the. Uh, made by the deputy president uh, William Ruto mm -hmm. about uh, threats to his uh, life. Okay, mm -hmm. um, the there have been news going around mm -hmm. regarding uh, claims mm -hmm. on the attempt on the on the life of the deputy president, mm -hmm. 
and uh, it's an issue of national concern mm -hmm. because this is one of the most important people in the country. Mm -hmm. This is the person who, in the absence of the president, mm -hmm. becomes the acting president mm -hmm. as stipulated in the constitution. So he is a very important person. So when a claim of that caliber mm -hmm arises mm -hmm. there ought to be thorough and proper investigations mm -hmm. which are conducted with respect mm -hmm. to the truth in those allegations mm -hmm. and if there's any culprits that are found mm -hmm. their uh, proper action should be taken against them mm -hmm. so i think the allegations uh, when i read a uh, national newspaper uh, three cabinet actually four cabinet secretaries were summoned mm -hmm. by the directorate of criminal mm -hmm. investigations to record statements mm -hmm. with regards to the deputy president's allegations mm -hmm. now um, these three cabinet secretaries uh, peter munya mm -hmm. uh, uh, john mosheru and uh, cecily kariuki mm -hmm. for health were uh, summoned in the dci mm -hmm. but they did give a statement mm -hmm. the reason why they didn't give a statement mm -hmm. was because the complainant mm -hmm. didn't give a statement uh, in, file, uh, in, an in, 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 in an official uh, way in an mm -hmm. official manner mm -hmm. so um in my opinion mm -hmm. the very first step that mm -hmm. uh, was supposed to happen is in such serious kinds of allegations mm -hmm. uh, particularly touching on very important persons in government mm -hmm. the directorate of criminal investigations mm -hmm. george kinoti uh, is is mandated to write are in written form summons mm -hmm. regarding those allegations to the people who are being suspected. Mm -hmm. Then, or the heads of serious crimes unit mm -hmm. make a written kind of application. Mm -hmm. Then uh, the summons should be served mm -hmm. to the people involved. Mm -hmm. So it should be done in such a manner that it's official. Mm -hmm. Then the complainant, which is the deputy president, is required to record a statement. Mm -hmm. Because in our criminal justice system, mm -hmm. Only a complainant mm -hmm. who complains against a certain thing mm -hmm. needs to come out, mm -hmm. prove and mm -hmm. say that I have received death threats mm -hmm. or these people are uh, discussing mm -hmm. on how to eliminate my existence. And, pre and present your evidence. Yeah, and present your evidence. Mm -hmm. Then the other party is mandated to record their mm -hmm. statements in response to mm -hmm. this evidence that the complainant, which in this case is the deputy president, mm -hmm. has issued. Mm -hmm. And that did not happen. That did not happen. Yes. And then we saw the, uh, the director of public prosecution uh, outsourcing uh, or stating that they have outsourced the FBI to help with the investigation. So this yeah. is our last remark. Yes yeah. or no answer. Uh, mm. Do you think this was necessary and uh, what does it do to the image of our sovereignty as a country? Okay, do, do I comment or...? <laughs> All right. Yes or no answer. Did we, did, was there a need to outsource? To outsource the, 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 FBI. the FBI? Yes. You see, at such a matter where, you know, the deputy president in his capacity mm -hmm. as a sitting deputy mm -hmm. to the president mm -hmm. is not himself mm -hmm. he's a uh, uh, our our deputy president mm -hmm. and as such he's treated as a property of the state mm -hmm. and therefore his security mm -hmm. is not is guaranteed mm -hmm. at any level mm -hmm. and uh, anything that would uh, jeopardize his security mm -hmm must be taken seriously. Mm -hmm. Whether or not we have the FBI, mm -hmm. the people, if at all, mm -hmm. uh, there are people that were planning to do that, mm -hmm. let the agencies that are supposed to uh, do the investigations, whether FBI mm -hmm. or the Kenyan system, do the investigations. Mm -hmm. So for me, should be treated with importance. For me, yeah. the issue should be treated with importance, uh -huh. whether uh, FBI or whether not. Whether FBI or not, uh -huh. that is not a matter of uh, uh, sovereignty or not. Uh -huh. It is a matter of expertise uh -huh. and uh, experience. As Thank well you very as much. Independence. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes, what please. do you think about this? Particular? Uh, I think the on the issue of the Directorate of Criminal Investigations mm -hmm. outsourcing the FBI, mm -hmm. uh, there is never, there's never really. Uh, an ex is that what you're asking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's never really an express provision that uh, bars the director of criminal right. investigations from outsourcing mm -hmm. if the level of uh, 
claims or allegations touch on a very important person mm -hmm. like the deputy president mm -hmm. so it might use that help mm -hmm. to make sure that the investigations are adequately mm -hmm. and perfectly conducted mm -hmm. to protect the life of the deputy thank president. you very much we have come to the end of this yes. uh, social media handles on yes. camera four so they can interact with you to uh, yeah. get more of this information so okay. we can uh, perhaps push this conversation forward mm -hmm. on facebook Karaoke mm -hmm. Gunjiri mm -hmm. on Twitter at Dante Karaoke. We can uh, continue the discussions there. Thank you very much. Exactly. Uh -huh. And uh, my Facebook uh, name is Benea Okongo. Mm -hmm. You can get me also on Instagram as Benea. Mm -hmm. And uh, in case you have any issues, you can be able to address me on, on my Facebook page. You can add me as a friend or follow me. Mm -hmm. Then we can be able to discuss any further issues which you may have. All right. Yes. And we'll be doing this every single Monday, uh, Youth and Politics for you on Y in the Morning. And mine is at It's By Morning, every social media platform. And Kalami Valley is coming up next with girls with men's talk. You don't want to miss this, it's a hot topic.